Hello friends, today I'll be discussing poverty. I was recently watching a video on cooperative businesses and I came across a video which inspired me to make this script. The beginning of this video will be dedicated to describing things which most of you are already familiar with, but I assure you there are some interesting things which I thought were worth making an entire video over. The video was called How to Stop Poverty, Start a Worker Owned Cooperative. In the video, the man described something called systems theory. Systems theory is, in simple terms, the study of patterns and cycles. One cycle which both that video and this one stress is the cycle of poverty. The cycle goes like this. You start with little or no money. This leads to little or no quality education. Lack of quality education means you can't get most jobs. And a lack of a job or quality job leaves you with little or no money. Such the cycle repeats itself in an endless death spiral. However, systems theory teaches us something very important. As a law, changing one part of the system usually affects other parts of the whole with predictable patterns of behavior. What do we take from this? Well, if we were to, for example, equip all members of society with a meaningful job which earns any certain amount of money which it may be easy to live off of and save some money away for possible future in education, you will invariably change and even possibly completely reverse the cycle of poverty from that one aspect of the cycle. While most of this seems incredibly obvious, I want to stress the importance of systems theory. Systems theory proves that what we have been saying about equipping all members of society with a job is right. Systems theory shows us communists that we are, scientifically speaking, completely correct. Now comes the inevitable question. How do we get there? I and people like me would love to rush to the conclusion of socialism, communism, and any other measure of words which describes a society founded upon the needs of people over the profits of industry. While that would be the correct and logical conclusion of a society which radically seeks to end poverty, it would be a disservice on our part to not first discuss and or reinforce why that is the answer. We live in a capitalist economy and, to put it bluntly, capitalism thrives on poverty and unemployment. Labor is a commodity, just as much as a coat or a book are commodities. They are all viewed under capitalism as things which are to be bought and sold, in the case of labor, hired and fired. It is because of this that labor follows the patterns of a commodity and must respond to supply and demand. Capitalists will always seek to produce the largest amount of profits from their investments, labor. If jobs are in high demand and low supply, which means there is a lot of unemployment, capitalists may raise the price of a job, meaning lowering wages. Similarly, if there is high supply and low demand, which means unemployment is low, then the cost of labor is becoming unprofitable and layoffs will ensue. This is the law of poverty. Labor is most profitable when unemployment peaks. Labor is least profitable when unemployment plummets. The several dozen transnational corporations of the world absolutely have the power to employ all people, but don't, because it's not profitable to have high levels of employment. But this is wrong. Poverty is a problem. 4.5% of all deaths in the United States alone are caused by poverty, and poverty-related deaths totaled up to 874,000 in 2011. There must be an internal solution within capitalism that we just aren't realizing yet. Well, maybe if you want to keep searching for one, there is, but history teaches us that this isn't a flaw, it's actually a feature. Poverty is another one of those grand aspects of capitalism, like overproduction, imperialism, and social inequality. Then what is the answer to the inevitable question of how do we get there? Well, socialism, communism, any other measure of words which describes a society founded upon the needs of people over the profits of industry. The video I was referring to does a great job of explaining why workers' cooperatives are a good way of supplying communities with jobs and raising hundreds of people out of impoverished conditions. However, people like the man in the TED Talk never take these ideas to their logical conclusions. Let us return to systems theory for a moment. The cycle of poverty is itself a self-perpetuating system, yes, but also itself exists within a much larger self-perpetuating system, capitalism. I very much could dedicate an entire video's worth of time to discussing the intricacies of the cycle of capitalism, but I think it can be roughly summed up with the phrase, capital requires profit, which requires capital. If you wanted to employ all people, not most people, not the vast majority of people, but all people, you'd need to be acting outside the interests of the profit motive, as it would be unprofitable. As stated before, changing one part of the system usually affects other parts and the whole system with predictable patterns of behavior. If you remove the profit motive of society, you would invariably remove or change capital. We know what this change is. Capital either is removed and no longer exists as capital, or it becomes social capital. You might be thinking that just because you ignored one part of the profit motive, and that the rest doesn't have to follow suit, but you'd be wrong. The only way to run an industry with universal employment would be on the grounds that you aren't running them for profit, because if you were, you'd be consistently losing revenue. Time for the TLDR. Poverty is bad. Poverty can be reversed by giving people jobs and quality education. Universal employment is bad for capitalism as it's unprofitable. The only way to solve poverty is to remove profit and capitalism.